listening to the Marketing and Yoga Pants podcast, a podcast in sisterhood for female entrepreneurs that serves up savvy, actionable marketing advice and interviews with creative business owners who are in the trenches building their businesses as we speak. The Marketing and Yoga Pants community is for you, the girl on her couch, in her yoga pants, top knot tight, hunched over her MacBook, trying her hardest to get the word out about her business. So in the name of supporting each other while supporting ourselves, bringing community, sound marketing advice, coffee, chocolate, and wine together for you, yoga pants wearing business owner, in a world where followers mean nothing but paying customers mean the world, Join us on this week's podcast episode and in our private Facebook group where you'll meet your soul sisters and build your business in yoga pants. Welcome back to another episode of the Marketing and Yoga Pants podcast. I'm Britt Colo, and I'm here today with Kate Juniper, founder of Juniper Editing and Creative. Thank you so much for joining me today, Kate. Thank you for having me, Britt. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes. Okay. So I don't really know Kate, but I feel like I do. We were just talking about this before we hit the record button. I've been following Kate on Instagram and I honestly have no idea how I came to follow her. I have no idea, but uh, I've been following her for quite some time and I'm just always enamored by her stories and the type of business that she runs. It just fascinates me. So I'm so pumped to get to chat with her today, get some insight into her business, her industry, her marketing strategy, and what makes it all tick. So Kate, are you ready to jump in? Let's do it. All right, let's do this. So first of all, tell us, how do you earn your living? Um, great question. It's becoming a little more varied as the time goes by, but, um, primarily I'm a book editor. So, uh, I work with authors and publishing houses, uh, uh, on manuscripts from, um, varying levels of, uh, you know, rough to near finished, uh, quality. Um, and I, uh, basically perform varying, uh, levels of editing on manuscripts to make sure that they're ready for for print and and uh, and are the the perfect and uh, you know um, reputable kind of works of fiction that we uh, we read and pick up off the shelves. So um, that's where why my practice and my business began was with uh, was with book editing. Um, and nowadays, um, I that's whilst that's my primary kind of um, role and where I really uh, identify. Um, that's my, my primary role that I identify with. Um, I'm also uh, a book writing coach and a copywriter as well. So it kind of all feeds one into another. Book writing coaching came obviously from the editing aspects. Um, it takes a more um, holistic and supportive role from the earlier stages of a manuscript um, being written. And the copywriting kind of came actually from um, being a business owner and an entrepreneur and realizing um, that there are a lot of people out there with a passion and a business model or idea or something they've been working on for a long time. Uh, lots of thought, lots of strong thoughts and feelings and passions about it, but maybe not the uh, ability to put that into really concise, uh, you know, language on their websites and things. Okay. So it's kind of a threefold practice. Right. And so you're primarily doing fiction editing and writing, right? Yeah, um, lots of fiction, literary fiction and, uh, and popular fiction, but we also do uh, um, history books, business books, um, and a lot of nonfiction to um, self-help. It's, it's really nice and varied, and that's one of the fun things about working for different publishing houses is you know, they will work with different genres, and so I get a little bit of a little bit of a, well, a lot of variety and uh, some, some really fun surprises as well. That is so fascinating. And like 12 year old Brittany is like, oh my gosh, this sounds like a dream job. Uh, I've always dreamed of being a writer. It's just always something yeah. that I've done. And I didn't take the path that you did, obviously, but it just, it fascinates me so much. So before I'm, I have so many questions, but before we get there, I would love to know, 
how did you come to do this with your life? Tell us that story. Sure. Yeah. It's, um, it's funny, uh, much like you, I grew up just adoring books they were I've always been a huge part of my life and much to my parents um chagrin I <laughs> I pursued English literature all through school college university um and into my master's degree and um you know I think that was difficult for them because they loved how much I loved books but also didn't didn't see necessarily how that was going to um transform into you know a a, a a profitable and comfortable career in the future mm-hmm. how can you how can you just read novels and and make that work as a as a job in the future um and I literally kind of just did right did exactly that but um yeah it was kind of it kind of came to me by accident I as I say I did um my my bachelor's degree in English literature and I uh, I ended up working in the Middle East for three years as a high school teacher. Um, mm-hmm. There's lots of editing in that role, obviously, because um, you're marking essays and, and helping um, kids form arguments, organize their ideas, write, uh, write their essays and, uh, and stories. Um, but it wasn't until I moved to Canada to pursue my master's degree that editing kind of fell into my lap, really. I was... Uh, as part of my master's degree, I was offered research assistantship jobs and editing jobs for um, my professors. And I <clears throat> ended up working for the, the chair of the department. Um, and he was really generous with um, workload and also the kind of the nature of the work that I was doing. So it was quite collaborative and, uh, and interesting. Um, but it was quite dry because it was academic writing. Mm-hmm. Um, so while I enjoyed it, it's kind of, you know, the copy editing and proofreading aspects of editing are almost like doing a crossword and that level of satisfaction when you, when you pick those things up. Um, but it never occurred to me that this would be something that I did long term. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I actually ended up doing copy editing for Routledge for this in the same way. One of my professors um, hooked me up with a really great... Uh, freelance job a gig as a copy editor um but again it was you know short encyclopedia entries on an interesting subject but nothing that you could really sink your teeth into and and become invested in um so after that i i worked in a a couple of galleries i did uh you know i I love the visual arts too and that was something that really um, potentially interested me as a career uh, there's always room for editing in any profession, I find, mm-hmm. yeah. what you're doing. Um, but it was when I finally um, began working in publishing that I realized that um, editing extended so much further beyond grammar and punctuation. Uh, and very quickly, my skills as an editor became useful to the office um, in terms of managing the freelance pool of editors that we had at the time. Mm. Um, So that role came about um, basically because I kept bringing up my concerns to, uh, to people in house and saying, well, I'm not, I'm not quite sure we're we're not doing this really very consistently, or, you know, maybe, maybe we could, uh, you know, put some, some systems in place to make sure that everything's being done really well. Um, And so it was then that I started working with freelance editors. Um, I think we were, we have about 70 freelance editors from all over the world. Um, And they were the ones developing manuscripts, helping authors craft their stories, uh, heighten drama, develop characters, naturalize dialogue. And that was when it really struck me that oh my goodness, I've been doing this job all this time and getting all of this training, but this is, this is like a passion. This is my, mm. um, this is where I want my career to go. This is my vocation. Um, so yeah, so that was, I think, um, that was definitely the catalyst for me then to decide to go freelance, um, and build a business around, around book editing. That is, that's amazing. Okay. So do you work as, a freelance contractor for publishing houses or for the writer themselves? How does that work? Yeah, it's, it's, again, it's pretty varied. I have 
couple of great contracts with um, with publishing houses. Okay. Um, so, you know, and then I also uh, work with um, independent clients as well. So I have um, a huge array of relation, working relationships with authors, some of whom I have, you know, only minor dealings and conversations with. Um, you know, the publisher is the um, is is the is the working relationship, and I'm and I'm a contractor of their um, services. Um, and then, obviously, when it comes to um, my own clients and my own authors who come to me through my website or through Instagram, Facebook, things like that, um, we have a lot more um, day to day conversations and just general kind of um, collaborative. Uh, kind of approach to things so mm-hmm. yeah it's really really varied um it's so interesting yeah it's really fun yeah. especially when you get down to the the coaching too you know when you're editing uh sometimes the practice is just to take the manuscript and fix it up, fix it up right uh, and other times it's a much more um collaborative experience i recently finished editing an rpg game Uh, a role-playing game much like Dungeons and Dragons um, as a pretty new genre for me Mm -hmm. (laughs) and not a game that uh, a a form of game I'm really very familiar with Um, but that was a hugely collaborative experience because there were there was world building there were you know characters and races of characters cultures cities countries uh, on top of the rules um, magic tricks just all kinds of uh wow all kinds of diverse details that really needed kind of a lot of back and forth on it wow oh that's so cool okay so all right so there's the book editing the coaching the copywriting happening when did you start all of this what year was that uh i started editing about six seven years ago independently uh, I started my business and independently um, freelancing in May of 2016. Okay. Um, Yeah. So it's been, I guess, a year and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, for myself. Okay. So when you really struck out on your own and went independent, how did you get your, how did you earn your first dollar? How did you get the attention of your very first paying client? Mm-hmm. Um, my first client actually came from Upwork. Um, it, it was my first and last client on, uh, on, the, on the platform. <laughs> um, I think it's a great way to get into um, a market like that, but it certainly um, isn't for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, uh, my first client... <laughs> Uh, we found one another on there. He was um, looking for an editor for his uh, dystopic fiction novel. Uh, and so we we struck up a conversation. He was talking to a couple of different um, potential editors, um, but we really got along and dystopic fiction is, is, uh, is a big, um, it's one of my favorite things to work on, really. I love the... Uh, the speculation uh, mm. behind creating a world like that, that's, um, you know, post, post us, uh, find yeah. that really fascinating, um, premise. So yeah, we, um, we began working, um, together on that novel. And since then he's, the, the, the book was actually the first of a trilogy. Um, I was, charging a very very humble amount of money to 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 edit this gargantuan book i think it was 140,000 words oh my gosh um, i guess it's probably about 300 word word document pages wow. um and so i did that you know um in the evenings on the weekends um mm. and he ended up tipping me actually for that job and since then we've worked on book two and book three is in the works at the moment. So he was, I mean, that was probably the best first client experience I could have asked for. It really gave me the confidence to, um, to, to forge ahead. Um, yeah. That's and, so cool. Yeah. 
How are you getting your clients right now, a year and a half in? What does that look like? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, I have um, contracts with a couple of publishing houses, which keep um, a really, you know, there's there's a nice um, couple of resources there that I don't have to to refill at all times. Um, and that's a really helpful um, beginning. Aside from that, um, I enjoy quite a lovely lot of referrals from um, other clients and, and from friends. Uh, it's amazing how many people you know are writing a book um, and how many mm. people they know who are writing a book. And it's, it's probably not uh, something that you would learn about people unless you're in, in the yeah. industry. Um, and so that's been a really fun way of getting new clients, not only because, you know, word of mouth is uh, such a great way to, um, to bring in new work, you know, you, uh, so much of the, of the selling of the thing has already been done for you in mm-hmm. uh, ways and support from, from people, you know, and love and have worked well with. Um, but it also just brings out about so many surprising projects, um, mm. and exciting ones too. Oh, that's so cool. Um, do you ever get sick of reading? <laughs> no, I don't. No, you don't? Oh, I've always wondered that. Like these book, uh, like book editors and book reviewers, you know, mm-hmm. these people that are paid to like write reviews for books. And I, I always think like, don't you ever just like not want to read one week? Or don't you just like, just don't want to take in any more information? I feel Thank like you. I'm... I've wondered about this. I've asked myself actually that question, wondering, you know, is this ever going to get, get old? But I mean, every, pretty much every um, professional kind of choice I've made or educational choice I've made has put basically put, been to put myself in the way of reading more books. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, my friends of mine ask me this all the time, you know, because I read a lot of books, um, in book form, you know, the finished article, I read a lot of books, um, anyway, outside of work. And, um, yeah, the, the simple answer is no, I don't seem to be able to get enough of reading. <laughs> that, well, that's good. I just, I've always <laughs> wondered that. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's talk about the work that you're doing right now. What are you working on? Where's your focus at? Mm. Um, well, in terms of uh, books, I, um, I'm working on a couple of things at the moment. Uh, one comes in, the other goes out to the author, and then we kind of transition back in again. But uh, one of the books I've really been having fun with lately um, is for a traditional publishing house. Um, and it's uh, kind of a collection of vignettes, really. It's, uh, <laughs> when I first got the pitch, I was... Not really sure it was, um, but maybe for me, it's uh, basically written around the subject of of fishing, of salmon fishing. Um, So, you know, my uncle, a big fan of of fishing, and I've I've maybe learned a little bit uh, from him in my lifetime, but um, certainly not a personal interest or passion of mine, but the author's written it in a really, really playful literary, just a beautiful way, really fun characters. And um, so they're kind of anecdotes or vignettes that piece together into this, um, basically like one summer's worth of, uh, of fishing in uh, the Pacific Northwest. Um, so that's been really fun. Mm. Um, I look forward to seeing the cover design for that one. It's not yet completed. Um, and another book I'm working on at the moment is um, by two um, professors, two women, uh, who coined a new, uh, system for problem, uh, problem solving and decision-making, um, for everyday life. So, oh, yeah. so different. So different. It's so vastly. <laughs> okay. Um, now, I mean, for us, you know, the people that are like, we haven't, we've never, even thought about the book editing process and how many books are produced in a year or in a month or anything. I mean, there are so, so many books out there being written and being edited and at once. And, um, we might, if we don't think about it, we might just think that the, the only ones that get published are the ones that are, you know, on the top 
list, the bestseller list, but really there are so many other books out there. Mm -hmm. And so what is from your perspective as an editor, um, have you worked on any books? Be, I mean, you've been doing this for quite a while, independently and not independently. Have you worked on any books that have reached bestseller list? And w- what percentage of the of the industry is that? I'm so intrigued oh, to know that. So small. It's yeah. So small. Um, uh, one of the publishing houses I work with has won uh, a number of awards, um, and within the pub, the publishing houses that I've worked for, we've, we've, we've gained uh, some, some great acclaim, but as you, as you say, I mean, the, the number of books that reach um, kind of fame is, I mean, I mean, it's a fraction of a, of a percentage of yeah. the books that are created um, yeah. and that go out into the world. Um, you know, when you look at bestseller lists on Amazon, for instance, that's a very different story. Um, in that case, I've, I've worked with and edited several books that have made it into Amazon, you know, bestsellers on top, top selling lists. Um, but the actual, um, audience for, um, you know, 99.9% of books is, is, is quite small. Yeah. Uh, so it really depends on, you know, the, a lot of, a book's success nowadays relies on an author's um, own marketing efforts. Yeah. And that, that applies um, not just for self-publishing, but also for tra- traditional publishing mm-hmm. uh, houses as well. Um, so, you know, the, the budget for, um, you know, a best-selling novel um, is, is millions of dollars, but in order yeah. to get to that place, you need to prove that you're a great investment. And a lot of authors now are self-publishing in the hope of gaining that ground and opening up a market so that they can transition into a tr- traditional publishing house with a good contract. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, there are other um, benefits to self-publishing. You, you can, you know, you have basically... Um, you're a sole proprietorship. So you get to call the shots. You can choose yeah. your design and you can say yes or no to editing choices and, and you know, the blurb on the back of the book and things that if you go with a traditional publisher, you don't are, are kind of out of your hands. Mm-hmm. Um, Interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think one way that I buy books outside of buying um the canonical literature, which I love reading, um, and modern, um, you know, books on the bestseller list, which I like to keep an eye on, um, for industry purposes, as well as entertainment purposes. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think it's really, uh, it's much like buying local. You can choose a publishing house, um, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, American, Canadian, British, um, that, that publishes the kind of works that you love. You know, for instance, if something has a vintage press stamp on it, you know, a certain kind of person is going to love vintage <coughs> press books or Virago books or uh, anchor books, you know. So publishing houses do tend to um, hold a clue to the kind of qual- kind of books that you um that they sell. Um, and that's a really fun way, I think, of, of finding new, new authors that you may not otherwise have um, come across. That's a good tip. Uh, have you ever written your own book? <laughs> Actually, I am in the midst of NaNoWriMo at the moment. Oh, you are the second person I've talked to today that's in <laughs> NaNoWriMo. There's another, yeah, yeah there's another uh, podcast guest in this batch of episodes that is also in the throes of this so (laughs) good for her yeah Yeah. it's it's not a small undertaking it's Mm -hmm. um you know I mean it's been pretty pretty popular for a long time but I do feel this year it seems to have really blown up maybe we have all the more to say um in relation to the the world outside of our our doors at the moment um yeah for me it's been a really great insight into what my clients go through um you know I've written hundreds of articles and blog posts and ebooks for other companies, um, white papers. I've written 
and been paid to write, you know, hundreds of different forms of things. And I've also written um, creatively myself. Um, but, you know, those, those creative works extend to, you know, maybe 5,000 word short story. Um, very different to a 50,000 or even a 100,000 word novel. Yeah. Um, and so much more is going on when you have to um, put something like that together. So, you know, I, th I, can s I think of it in terms of, you know, I've always been a sprinter and now I'm training to run the marathon. Um, and it's, it's, really, it's been really fun and really rewarding, um, but also extremely informative. Um, mm getting kind of putting myself in in the place of my of my authors and and getting even more of an insight and even greater respect for what they they managed to do yeah that's neat um what mm -hmm. inspires you and your work all of this writing and all of this reading what inspires you um i'm inspired by i'm inspired by unapologetic art and literature I'm, mm. and I'm inspired to achieve that for people um, you know I really do believe in the power of words um, written and spoken to change everything I mean they do change everything um, and if I you know if in terms of inspiration I am inspired by people who achieve that and I'm also inspired to help people achieve that and that's really fundamentally my goal um, with what I do I I love literature I love communication I love people and I love helping people refine and really get to the the core of what they're trying to communicate to the world so that's what inspires and fuels me to, to do it every day. That's beautiful. Oh man, that's so good. I got like chills and I just felt so good <laughs> hearing you say that. And it's what a blessing it is to be able to spend your days doing that, doing that exact thing. Oh, it's so good. Um, if someone wanted to learn more about producing a book, writing a book, uh, what kind of resources would you send them to? Books, podcasts? courses what where where would you send them um oh gosh there's so much out there I know. Um, that's why it, I asked because I'm like uh, where do I go <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um oh well one of the um one of the books I swear by actually and it, it surprised me because um I'm not I'm not uh I respect his work, but I'm not a huge fan of his, his work is on writing by Stephen King. Um, hmm. you know, I think most, most writers or most, most people interested in writing have heard of that book if they haven't read it, but I, um, I read it for professional, uh, purposes and because I'd, I'd heard it was great. Um, and I use a lot of, you know, I use a lot of these resources when I um, put together writing resources for coaching, when I put together marketing um, content. Uh, but it got to the point where I ran out of, of sticky tabs and basically every page was marked with something mm -hmm. valuable. Um, so in terms of you know, the, this, the psychology behind writing, the practical aspects of writing as well as some of the um you know the technical and artistic kind of advice on writing is an incredible resource it really um it really is just packed with very very clear and consistently really useful advice um so Great. i definitely would have yeah would um recommend that um in terms of getting more of an insight into editing and yeah. what it is, which is yeah. one of the, my major kind of uh, missions with my marketing is to kind of pull back the veil a little bit and, mm -hmm. and give people a good idea of what it actually is that editors do aside from, uh, you know, catching typos and dotting the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stet is a really great book by, um, one of the world's probably one of the world's most famous editors uh diana athill she um she edited in um 
well, for most of the, the 20th century, really. Um, and she is a very in influential woman in, in British publishing and, and in international um, editing, too. Um, and that's really fun um, for a kind of anecdotal um, look at editing and, and some really interesting authors that she worked with, too. Hmm, that's good. Okay. Uh, listeners... Who wants to go re read a book right now? Like I do. I want to go read all the books just talking about all this. I just want to like, oh man, I just want to grab every single book in my house and <laughs> grab my iPad and my Kindle and every other e-reader that I own. I don't know why I have so many, but, um, and just buy all the books and then read all the books. Um, okay. Mm. Kind of interesting. I don't know. I don't know if this even happens for editors, but do you have a, do you have a favorite author? Can you have a favorite author? I don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I have I have a lot of favorite authors for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, Henry James has always been a love of mine, um, even though from an editing perspective, he's kind of a nightmare um, of an author. <laughs> um, you've got to be in a really particular frame of mind to enjoy the kind of rambling, um, illusion or kind of writing that he um, he puts out there a lot of the time or put out there, um, many years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, one of my very all time favorite authors, um, is having a real moment right now. And that's Margaret Atwood. I think she mm -hmm. is, um, just an incredibly insightful, um, as, and detached, uh, author. She, she's, she writes from, so many different perspectives with such an intimate level of insight and yet this awesome objectivity which I think only comes from a very very particular kind of person yes um and she's a pretty cool customer too uh in in life I think so yeah she really intrigues me as a person and an author um Angela Carter is another another um author who I really, really have always loved and admired. Um, and you could probably just keep going on people. and on. <laughs> oh, for a million years. I would love to make two recommendations, actually. Please do. Um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, of women's literature. Um, mm -hmm. I am a woman. I work with a lot of women writers. I also um, work with a lot of... Um, I have uh, an organization that brings together um, female entrepreneurs in, in my city. Um, and I have recently fallen in love with two, two novels by two very contemporary female authors. Um, one is Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk. That's the title of the novel by Kathleen Rooney. Uh, and the other is Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff. They're both um, pretty enchanting novels very different in uh in nature but both definitely worth worth a look oh i just want to go read okay we got to get this podcast episode <laughs> done with because i just want to go read okay but for real but we are at our, our we are at our last question uh okay so i would love for you to look back kate and um and think of what advice would you give to yourself when you were first starting your business, that girl on her couch hunched over her MacBook, trying to figure all of this out, what would, what would you say to her? Um, I think it's probably, I think I probably would give her the advice that I'm trying, I'm working on taking for myself right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not so far away from that girl that we're right. different people. And I think uh, in a nutshell, it's that you can be dedicated without being consumed. Um, when you have, when you oh run your gosh, own business. So good. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so good. Yeah. When, when, you know, I'm editing is such a small part of, of the day to day things that, that I do because I run my own business. I have contractors. I, you know, I have uh, other people working for me now and, um, you know, just the, the managing of a business and as it grows, the, the amount of work you're doing that isn't immediately paid just seems to get, get bigger too. Um, you know, I think we, we often value our professional lives on how busy we're kept and how much we have to do. And, and we can conflate that with being so busy that that's success. 
and mm -hmm. um and i think there's just a there's a, just a moment there where you you're going to lose sight of what you do and why you do it if you if you can't take time for yourself and remember to be your own human being outside of of what you do um so that's what i'm working on right now dedication that's rather than consumption <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Before we go, could you please tell the listeners where they can find you online? Absolutely. Um, so you can find Juniper Editing and Creative uh, at our website, www.juniperediting.com. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook and on Instagram. And um, if you're looking in the next month or two, you'll notice that our website has changed dramatically. Um, oh. And we all have a new and pretty website up and running in December. And I'm really excited for everyone to see it. Oh, perfect. Okay. Well, this will be out in December. So that's perfect. Uh, all right. So you heard her girls. Go check her out. Send her some love. And then hop into our private Facebook group to hear even more from Kate over the next few days. for joining us on this episode of the marketing and yoga pants podcast keep the conversation going by visiting marketing and yoga pants.com slash facebook where you'll get to join that private facebook group i've been talking so much about there you'll get to chat with our podcast guests yeah they're in there too and all of the other brilliant creative business owners we're connecting we're meeting our soul sisters and we're building our businesses all while in yoga pants so come hang out with us. Again, visit marketinginyogapants.com slash Facebook to get in. And one more thing. If you dig this podcast, would you be awesome and share it with someone? This entire Marketing in Yoga Pants movement is nothing without its community. So please share. And if you're really feeling the love right now, jump into iTunes. You're probably already there if you're listening to this right now. And leave us a rating and review. The more of those we rack up, the more the podcast will be found by ladies like you and the stronger this community becomes. This episode was edited and produced by the Podcast Engineers. They're pretty great, so go find them at podcastengineers.com. This episode was also brought to you by my online marketing agency, Jam Marketing Group, and you can find us at jammarketinggroup.co. That's all for now. Thanks for listening. And I'll catch you back here next week on the Marketing and Yoga Pants podcast. Love ya. Bye.